Hello? Hi, yes, uh, Cameron and Victoria are recording a video. Please call back in about an hour. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today, me and Cameron are going to be, um, well, first of all, if you don't know, then you have a lot of catching up to do. We five years in deep in this thing, okay? This is my husband, Cameron, in all his macaroni and cheese glory. Every year she has to. What? This is my husband. Okay, it's my Keep husband, going. Cameron. We are doing an anniversary video we do this every year um, where we just like answer questions. Um, I posted on my Instagram that we're gonna be doing another one and you guys gave us a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions. So we're gonna try to get through majority of them in the hour that we have on this memory card, okay? If you have not seen any of our previous videos, if you don't know who we are, if you don't know anything about our story, how we met, how we knew each other was the one, what was dating like, how long we dated. We have like we have more than, videos. We have more than that, yeah. yeah, we have like all these videos. So go watch that. I'll have that linked up here in the card section so you guys can check out all those videos. It's in a playlist called Vicky and Cam. So there's a whole plethora. And then if you can't get enough of us and you need to know more about our lives, we have a whole vlog channel as well, which I will link in the card section. There's lots of videos available to you, okay? We're ending year five. We're going into our sixth year of marriage. Let me clear that up. Ending year five. And we're gonna go ahead and answer these questions. These are gonna be about year five. Most of them are about year five. Some of them are like about random things. Pregunta numero uno. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get down to quizness. <laughs> <laughs> numero uno. It's your host, your hostess with the mostess. All right, question number one. What new things? Mm -hmm. Have you learned in the past year about it? Well, uh, honestly, I'm about to get deep already. Oh, already. Okay, so <laughs> like, like husbands, you have no idea the amount of influence that you have, not just on those of you that have children or um, those of you that have siblings, things of that sort, but you have that same influence on your spouse. And I didn't understand the influence that I had on my wife in many ways but specifically in regards to our walk with the lord and uh i didn't i didn't realize like how just me being an example or just me you know having my own passion and, and desire to grow stronger in my walk and and just studying and being on it i didn't realize like how that took uh an effect or how that played a part in vicky uh wanting to strengthen her relationship we got and everything like i never forced her to do anything like I never say hey this is what we're gonna do like we're gonna do this right now I just kind of lead by example that's just how I am and like this last year she's like grown tremendously spiritually that's one of the things I learned like she like she went in like journaling and everything and now like I'm like man I need to like journal more I don't do it as intense because women have like 700,000 more words than we do <laughs> every day I, I try to write something down that you know whatever it is that you know, I might get through prayer, or, you know, the Lord may drop something on me. I just may write it down. So that's kind of that's kind of one of the things that I've learned from uh, from from my wife. I had all that time to think of a question, of an and answer, and I still don't got an answer. I can't think of anything. It'll come to me. It'll come to me later. I'll come back to this question because I don't even really know what new things I learned. All right, next. How have you changed in the last five years? I know how I've changed. Well, we all know the struggle of the century has been getting Vicky to talk about her emotions and figure out what to do with them. So I think I've become way more talkative about my emotions. I've been talkative my whole life, but about like specifically things that I struggle with and how to verbalize those things and talk about them with my spouse. And I've, I try, or I feel like, <laughs> I mean, you would be the one that- You want me to confirm? Really no, yeah. Like, I feel like I'm a little bit more patient. Our wives can sense things that are urgent and we'd be like, no, I got it, I got it. And then we don't. You'd be acting like you have stuff together, but you really don't and you need help, but you don't want to ask me. Yes. Because you're a man. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like letting my wife into those parts where, I mean, she has a right to know, like if I'm feeling pressure in a certain area right. and it's kind of, you know, it's letting her into those sacred spaces that us men try to yeah. hold on to, so. 
That is, okay, there it is. That's something that I learned about Cam last year is that he feels pressure and he deals with stuff. It doesn't tell me. Well, you do tell me, but in your own ways that I don't notice. You just like, oh, no, I need my time. It's hard to express what that feels like or what that means in that moment. Like, right. And, and we've had this discussion before. Like when I come home from work, I'm not trying to talk to you about what I just dealt with at work or whatever it is I'm dealing with. Like I need time to chill, like check on the sports game or play 2K or I don't know, watch YouTube videos or go clean my shoes or go to the gym. I need to decompress before I can talk to you about it. And then after I decompress, well, I'm like, well, I'm good now. So it's like, why bring it back up? How do you keep the passion and intimacy in your marriage? How do you keep things interesting? How do you keep things spicy in and out, in <laughs> and out of the bedroom? <laughs> I put all those together because literally- Oh, you put the, I was like, who? No, no, I put all those together question? because let me tell you, literally half of the questions were, how do you keep things spicy? How do you keep things interesting? How do you not get bored on date nights? For me, it's like communication. Like if you feel bored, Say you're communicate. Bored. <laughs> you have to put forth that same effort. And that's one of the things that I told her, I'm cool with doing the same things over and over and over again in certain aspects. Movie night, I like going to the movies. She'd be like, yeah, I like going to the movies and then she'll fall asleep. So now I feel like my money is being wasted because you fall asleep in the movie, but you say you like the movie. But then when like Friday comes around and I'd rather not do something because you're gonna fall asleep, then she's feeling like she's her time is not valued and our date night time is not valued because I feel like my time is not valued. And then on the flip side of that, women do this thing where we want men to live out these extravagant fantasy scenarios that we've set up in our head that are actually not realistic. I mean, I know y'all see this on Instagram, so I don't know, I don't know how many people actually do this in real life. Most men are not going to plan out a wine and dine date night every week. That's just not happening. It's not gonna happen. So sometimes you need to put forth the effort and say, hey babe, let's do something different and do something different. If you end up sitting on the couch watching Netflix every Friday and you wanna do something different, then say that. I don't wanna watch Netflix, let's go do something else. Or those of you that are indecisive, okay, if I choose something that you don't wanna do and I keep providing options that you still don't wanna do, you have to bring something to the table. We're either not gonna do nothing or we're gonna do the same thing we've always done. I don't want that. Okay, well, what do, what do you want, babe? Because I'm easy. Whatever you want, I'll eat. Whatever you want to do, I'll do it. Like, I'm cool either way. Just what I would say is you have to get it out of your head that he's going to automatically know what to do to make you happy. Because nine times out of 10, that's not the case. And that's a lot of the reason why women are so frustrated with men often is because we think that they think like us, they don't. He's not gonna read your mind and know exactly don't what think to do like to, to please you and make Steve you happy. Steve Harvey's so book can't to. help you think like me. And, and don't feel bad and be mad that he didn't think of it first. Like, oh well, he didn't think of it first. Just do it because you wanna do it. Uh, same thing goes for the bedroom. Uh, communicate. Communication. If you want the freak of the week, you better tell him, babe, I like the freak of the week. And, and vice and versa. Vice versa. What was the biggest obstacle slash difficult moment you had to overcome in 2018? A lot of last year, I was crying. <laughs> I cried a lot last year and I'm not necessarily sure if Cam really understood what was happening when it was happening, unless he like watched my videos and saw me explaining it or talking about it, or if you remember me talking about it at any point. But I don't think it was about any one particular thing. All I can think of is all of my struggles and just you being there for me. Holding me all of my struggles and holding me and, and, and just making me feel better when I needed you. It's Seriously. not something that we can like put a pin on. If it was, it's too deep for us to even go into detail about. It's like a handful of people that I can talk to about what I go through as a young minister, as a preacher's kid, as a man that works in corporate America, as a young African American man who's married. Uh, you know. Man, when life hits you, you really gotta you really gotta realize like who you got in your corner. Facts. And if you're married, that should definitely be your spouse. Like they should be numero 
Uno. And they should be the one that you can confide in. It should be the one that you can talk to. It should be the one that you can cry to. It should be the one that you can, you know what I'm saying? Say what you gotta say, get it off your chest so you're not holding on to that dead weight, to that unnecessary baggage, to that unforgiveness, to that whatever it is that you've been harboring that you need to let go of. Um, that's definitely, you know, man, this one right here. Can you give a comparison between year one and year five? Okay, so I'll go first. Year one is a uh, exploratory year. You know, you know you're still what learning. What the hell are we doing? <laughs> you're, like, you're dealing with two extremes coming together. We didn't live with each other. We didn't, you know, have our own apartment and, you know, and we were long distance. So, so I'm dealing, you know, first time living with a woman outside of, you know, being at home, my sister and my mom. But you have that and then to year five, it's like, I know what to expect. Certain things still kind of frustrate me or get annoying or whatever, but it's like, like I've been dealing with this, like, bruh, it's it's nothing now, right? I know what she's gonna do in the morning. I'm a creature of habit. I pretty much do the same thing unless, you know, I'm injured, like currently. But as opposed to year one is, I don't know what to expect. Or you have all of these preconceived notions and, and thoughts and opinions in your mind that don't play out like you thought they were before you got married, you're like, oh, that's not really how that goes, or that's not really how this works. First year, she cooked breakfast for me every morning. I ain't had breakfast since 2014. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> not, gained, not gained 30 pounds from eating cream of wheat and pancakes every morning, but man, that was the best 30 pounds I ever gained <laughs> in my life. So. I would say the biggest difference between year one and year five is like year one, we made a lot, like he said, we made a lot of assumptions. I, well, I know I wasn't communicating like half of how much I communicate now. Year one, I was just trying to figure it out without like really like asking or like telling him what I needed or like I would just, I was just kind of floating. But now I'm like, okay, we need to plan. We need to, we need to set this up. We need to set that up. We need to have a meeting corporate level now with this relationship. Like I am like to the T diagrams and making lists and organization. Cause before I was just literally winging it. What are some goals for this year of your marriage? And what is the thing? Goals for this year, we trying to buy a house, house, house. Trying to buy a house, house, house. So right now, save up to buy this house, house, house. Right now we in a house house. We live in a condo slash town home. Uh, number one, we've outgrown where oh, we are. Oh God, we've outgrown this place. So. And now I feel like we're getting more financially stable enough to handle a bigger place um, with growth that just happens. Uh, another goal is that um, I think I talked to you about that. Yeah, I did talk to you about this, how we want to like pay off this debt. Petty debt, basically. Yeah, that, that's exactly what we live in. Stupid, petty stupid debt. debt that just is stupid. Just, just kind of off. knock off some of the stuff that's holding us back so we can thrive. Right? Boom. For, you, for me, it's the year of big faith. That's what God said to me at the beginning of the year when we fasted for seven days. And so that's, that's just what I've been sticking with. Um, because yeah, I'm just trying to keep that same energy, keep that same faith that I have at the beginning of something and maintain it, even when it looks like it's not gonna happen. I still gotta have that same energy. My Mine is resilience. Um, and also going with that, me and Gabby were talking about this as well, about how we just, what if what would happen if we went all in, mm. in whatever we do. Message, uh, now that you have five years done, is it true that the first year is the worst? No, that's false. Like our first year, I thought it was great. Our first year it was not even close to being the worst. No. Our like two years ago was like the worst. Yeah, three, year three. Yeah, year three was. Year three was trash, bro. And it wasn't like, like we were, we wanted to leave each other. No, it, no, was, it was everything it was around just, us. Yeah, everything was that was happening to us. Blowing up, exploding. Us. Sheesh. What year has been your favorite? My favorite year was this past year. Yeah, this past year was. I think I like you the most in year five more than any other year. Like I literally, like <coughs> I was obsessed with Cam last year. It was kind of weird. Have y'all watched that show You? It was kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, do I look at you more now than I used to? Because I just feel like I keep no, looking you just, at you. You just, and I'm just like, wow, I really love you. Like you said, like you were a touchy feely person and I understood that, but in year one, like you kind of showed that, but you kind of didn't. But like now, like you're like more expressive with touch and I'm more responsive to you expressing yourself with touch. Whereas year one, I was definitely not having it. You definitely express that in touch and with your words now. Yeah, like last year, like we really like, we were just connected yeah. in more ways than one. Okay. And it was just beautiful. Wow. 
We just blossom. All right. What is one thing that has made you guys grow closer? Just all of the adversities that we have to, we've had to face in, since our marriage has been happening. Um, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. How do you both maintain such a good relationship with your in-laws? Easy for me. Um, Everybody likes camp. So not that's to my own horn, but. <laughs> That's literally like, his personality is literally likable. Like, and if there is, and if there's something that I don't like about you, like I know how to find the good things about you and dwell on those. The Bible says, think on these things. See, y'all be thinking about the wrong stuff. That's why you go over to your in-laws' house and you just think about the last time she snapped on you. What about how nice her hair looks all the time? When she snapping on you, her hair be done, don't it? <laughs> So you be like, you know what, mother-in-law, I really like your hair today. Oh, for real, girl? Yeah, I ain't even know. Boom. Now she ain't even snapping on you no more. She telling you about where she get her hair done. Um, I think for me, what helps me to get along with my in-laws is just by getting out of my head. I think sometimes I, I can overthink things and then I can feel like, man, like, they don't like me today because they said this to me or something like that. And then I like get my feelings. But it's like, you can't think of it like that because number one, even though you feel like you grown and you got it handled and you don't need them to help you, they're still gonna give their advice and their two cents about everything. Cause that's what parents do. Okay, they wanna see their kids prosper. So they're gonna, they're gonna give you guidance and instruction. Um, and sometimes that may make you feel away, but at the same time, you can't look at it as like, oh, well they, they get on my nerves and blah, blah, blah. Listen, they're parents. And they're so, always gonna parent. And they're always gonna parent. They're never not gonna parent. So overall, just stop taking things personal and just be like, okay, just okay. Don't talk back, don't argue. Okay. Are you guys thinking about purchasing a home this year? If so, what styles are you into? Absolutely, by the end of the year, we definitely plan on <clears throat> purchasing a new home, God willing. I'm more of like a contemporary modern type, but because the area that we live in, we don't really have no cold homes like that. <laughs> like when we was in Nashville, Bro. And I got to marry my homie Dustin and we saw all of these amazing contemporary modern homes and I was literally in awe, flabbergasted, screaming, screaming astonished, out the screaming. astounded. Screaming. This was beyond me. I was baffled. Vicky, she's more of like a rustic. I like rustic. I like westerny, like warm. I like warmth. I like wood and she's more of magnolia farms. And I like cow high. I'm more million dollar listing. Hey. You guys help each other with weaknesses and insecurities without being offensive. Number one, I I love Cam and he love he love me and we love each other. And so we both know that if I'm coming at you for anything, it's out of love. It's not because I don't like you. You know what I'm saying? I just want you to be better. We both know that we're not perfect. So if I say something to him, it ain't gonna be like he gonna get all in his feelings and leave me. I think the difference between weaknesses and insecurities is like a weakness is something that they're not good at and then an insecurity is something that they feel bad about in themselves so like obviously i'm not gonna pick at his insecurities i'm gonna go a little deeper into this question sometimes being with like certain people people can make you feel insecure about stuff biggie never makes me i never feel insecure about anything like we're very open and honest if i see somebody that's pretty I'm like man babe look at man she's pretty like it's never anything like that where Vicky's like, oh, like, what like I have to worry about him. Yeah. yeah. Um, over the years, have you slowly become, have you started slowly becoming similar to one another? Vicky steals everything I, I tell her, so that's. Oh, really? He's starting to become like me too, though. He steals my swag. Like, oh, okay. He'd be yeah. trying to dress like me all totally. the time. The way you, <laughs> you just spend the out. way you carry yourself and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, you do. Also, he'd be noticing like people eyebrows and stuff and he'd be like, yeah. That's, that started when we first started dating. Like I know good eyebrows, I know a good contour, I know a good height, like I know. Right, I gave so you that, never, I blessed you with those abilities. Me. Yeah, she. I mean, she definitely put me on game by all the celebrities that be wearing wigs and stuff. Man, we just so dumb, but like, we just be thinking it. <laughs> and she'd be like, ooh, her wig is trash. And I'm like, what you talking about? And then she'd be like, look, and I'm like, dang, it's trash. How often have your love languages changed and how do you adjust to the shift? Earlier in 2018, I did take the love languages test again, just to make sure that, you know, it was actually what it was and it wasn't. Uh -huh. um, obviously, I was a touchy person. He said that before. But now that has completely shifted to where I needed way more words of affirmation and quality time. 
Um, those are like the top two. Last year, we did a lot of talking um, and I told him, I was like, I need you to affirm me more. I need like more words. I need you to like tell me good things about me because I'm like struggling with myself and needed to hear somebody verbally reinforce things that I kind of already knew about myself and wasn't believing at the time. I had to do more of that too. I stepped it up a lot. I wrote him love letters. Like I would type them out and put him on his desk. <laughs> uh, like we're in middle school. We had to, I needed a lot more verbal and I need a lot more time with him. Like I'm like, I feel extremely lonely in this season of my life. I need you like to be on me. <laughs> Did you ever take the test again? Nope. You should. So I know if I'm doing it right. I like gifts and I like words. It didn't change. And I like booty. Booty is more important than what. <laughs> how has Cam made you better in Vice Versa? Cam has taught me how to be a good friend. He's like the template of friend. I can be better. I guess, but you're way better than me. I mean, I'm not, it's not like I was, I'm a trash friend or I was a trash friend. I wasn't as open as I could be in relationships to where people could actually be close to me. Um, there was kind of a wall there. And so he kind of helped me to break that wall down and like open up and be more vulnerable and learn how to like express my emotions and show people affection. I've done a lot of self-evaluation in this past five years as you can't tell. Yeah. How have I changed you? Uh, <laughs> Vicky's, Vicky's helped me be on it. It's crazy because like she's more on it as far as like priorities and things of that sort. And but she's not the most organized person, but like in my mind, when she has a system, like her system really works. And so like, that's one of the things that I've been trying to, you know, get on as well. So yeah, man, she's helped me, you know, with trying to be organized and trying to prioritize things properly and, and uh, you know, knocking out, doing what you gotta do. What things are essential to feeling happy in your relationship after being married this long? So, um, although we've been married for five years, I just wanna say this, although we've been married for five years, um, we haven't been married for like 10 years or like 20 years. It's not really a long time. It's not, it's not really a long time. I can't even believe we've been married for five years it's now. It's went by so fast. It's crazy. The phrase feeling happy, I can't really raise my arm like that, but mm -hmm. the phrase feeling happy, happy, I decide to be happy. Society and the outside culture will try to say, oh, these are things that your spouse needs to do in order for you to feel happy. I decide to love, I, I, I choose, that's like a decision that I'm making each and every day. Um, I choose to be happy no matter what the day brings. Like I may have um, my periods or times where I feel depressed or I feel sad or I feel unhappy, but at the end of the day, like it's a choice. That's true. After using this app, this mood app that I've been using, I've, I've come to the realization that I can choose my mood. Like it's it's very interesting how this has helped me with my mental health because really your mental health is all contingent upon you. It's actually contingent upon how you play things out in your own mind and how you register things. So you have to literally change your mindset to make yourself happy in a situation. If you're with the wrong person, they can make you feel bad about yourself and blah, blah, blah. But Kim can be the greatest guy in the world and I can still be unhappy. Like he can do everything right and I can still be unhappy. Like I can't think of one thing that's like things that he does that ruins my day. I can't think of anything like that. Yet I've had horrible days. How? Because it's in my brain and it has nothing to do with him. So, but if you want a very simple answer, just laugh and have fun. Next question. Do you think you have to love everything about a person to be with them? Absolutely not. I don't love everything about her and I'm pretty sure she doesn't love everything about me. Just no. <laughs> but you know what's funny? And this is gonna sound so romantic comedy, rom-com. Don't say that. <laughs> I, was, I was like yesterday years old when I learned what rom-com means. It's like the things I don't like about Cam, the things that annoys me the most. Like, I kind of like it. I'd be like, oh, now I wanna have sex. <laughs> How does it feel to be married for five years? It feels crazy. Crazy. Like I cannot believe it's been five years. I can't believe that. I'll be 30 next year. That's what I was about to say. Like, cherish your time. For real, live in the Spend moment. Spend your time wisely. A lot of y'all that just be out here doing stuff that has no meaning whatsoever. Bro, like you don't get that you time back. Get, you can't get that, I was, thank you, you can't get that back, man. 
How do y'all keep each other accountable spiritually? More recently, we've been doing Bible plans. Um, I'm more of a saint than her because I haven't uh, missed a day on my Bible. Oh my God, shut up. Don't so. do me like that. Cause I'm really upset that I missed that one day. It's because they surprised me for my birthday and I was shook. I'm like, when it comes to reading the word and stuff, like I get like private. Cause then like same okay I'm, I'm over I'm over our youth ministry and then like other like my goddaughter and then she be sending me plans and she be wanting to do and then I just get overwhelmed I'm like okay like I can't do all this now it gets crazy because then you have the people commenting and it's like you feel less of a Christian if you don't comment it's crazy that's the thing about the Bible app that I don't like and a lot of people ask me if I can do plans with a lot of people and if I'll add people as friends on the Bible app I don't I don't want the Bible app to be a social network for me because we are so involved in church and ministry i want it to be just the bible where me and god can do this thing and then that's it i'm real private about my relationship with god if y'all don't know that already and i feel like when we're ready to talk about things and when we're ready to if we have a discussion we want to have or we'll just have it favorite outfit for each other um i like when she wears jeans anything tight yeah i hate when she wears loose clothes i mean that's different but like when it's like a loose dress or something like I hate it. I love when Cam wears turtlenecks. Turtlenecks and some slim jeans, <laughs> preferably dark denim, and some boots. I got into Doc Martens and it just made me feel all kinds of ways. I love it. The grunge in me is happy. And then if it's not a turtleneck in the summer, I really like just a plain t-shirt and a chain. A nice t-shirt and a chain, but I like the shirt to fit nice so I can see his muscles and stuff. He be liking wearing loose stuff, so. I don't like wearing do tight shirts. shirts. He don't like wearing Especially tight shirts. Especially in the summer. But I like, I like fitted slim shirts. How do you find the balance between focusing on personal and relationship goals? To me, my personal goals overlap with my relationship goals. Because we are one. Gigi, what are you doing? I don't make decisions without thinking about him. And I'm pretty sure it's the same for him. So I feel like even if I had my own personal goals, they're going to affect him in some way. So I don't really, I don't feel like I have a, a hard time balancing those things. I go through my goals with her. Yeah. So, what is something that you do that you feel is timeless or will work 10 years from now? A date. Yeah, dating. Dating. Going outside of the house, like getting dressed, looking nice, and spending time with each other as if you were not married, like still trying to get each other. How do you not annoy each other? Impossible. Uh, plot twist. I annoy him a lot. Let me just tell you one of the recent things that annoys him that I've been doing. I've been scraping the mess out of him with my toenails. She got, I'm and... a, I, I, hopefully I can find this picture so she can put it in. Oh, the jacket in. Yes, she has these dagger toenails and she be shanking me at the, in the <laughs> middle of the night. Number one, Gigi and her already like smother me. I can't move because then I'm too wor too busy worried about waking them up or messing up their sleep while I'm over here suffering. The things you do for love. Okay, well, we're not gonna talk about how your knees be cold if you wouldn't go cold knees on me. I do that because you complain that you always so hot at night. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I want your cold knees on hey, me. Well, I'm trying to cool you off. What is the funniest moment y'all had? I got my hair done. I got a ponytail. I think, I, yeah, oh, I got I a ponytail and he ribbed, ribbed me, went in. He said I smelled, I'm gonna have to find a tweet of all the things he said I smelled like. I killed her. That's the thing, like you have to be able to rib slash roast, whatever y'all say, fry. Yeah. If I can't fire you spouse, up, we don't need like, to be together. How do you handle changes? Things never stay the same. And when you embrace that things never stay the same, it's easier for you to handle those. I'm cool with change. Some people are not cool with change. You're pretty cool with change. Yeah, I'm adaptable. We're both like go with the flow kind of people. Um, Since y'all are in biz together now, what business ventures can we expect? Books, speaking tours, etc. If we told you. We would have to kill you. How do you both guard your marriage? Just, man, honor. My dad's, my dad's been speaking on honor and man, just understanding, when you understand what honor is and how much you want honor, then you'll honor other people in that same way. I mean, I'm not about to be out here like making my wife look dumb. And like, that's what a lot of people like do. They, they're out here and they're not honoring their spouse. Like if you're not gonna honor them, why even why be, be with, with them? them? Like if you out here like that on your wife, like 
you don't understand what loyalty is. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta quit all this loyalty talk, and you, you didn't cheat it seven hundred million times. Okay. Um, I guard my marriage by keeping tabs on these hoes. Do you try and get sexy before bed, or do you wear comfy PJs and a bonnet? <laughs> Does Cam care how you look when you go to bed? I found that question very funny. And because we both be do ragged up. And you married to a black woman, you already know that hair wrap going on. And I'm gonna tell you, I can count on I can count on one hand how many times I've gone to bed with a wig on, how many times I've gone to bed with makeup on. But I feel like I kind of set that standard when we were dating because I used to Skype you with my hair wrapped and no makeup all the time. So I feel like he already knew what he was getting. Do you guys get discouraged when people ask you about not having kids yet? Short answer, yes. It, it didn't used to bother me until I understood how it bothered her and like now it bothers me. Everything is not as easy as it may seem. So, you know, just use common sense, proper judgment, wisdom before you make a statement. Because a lot of y'all don't ask necessarily. Y'all just say, y'all having kids yet? Do y'all even want? I mean, just like, you know, just got to be mindful. How do you decide to split holidays between families? We never really made like a decision about yeah, it. My just, family was just like, we, we just want her here for Christmas. Is it hard to grow as an individual while growing with your spouse? No. If I'm growing, he's growing. Yeah. Right. And vice versa. What have you had to sacrifice or compromise for the sake of your marriage? Vicky had to leave warm Texas and come up here to this negative. Listen. Today, we're in a polar vortex for the last two days and then she left her family. I, I sacrificed my whole life. Number she didn't one, really have one, but yeah. I didn't really have a life, but at the same time, I left like everything I knew. And I didn't realize how much of a sacrifice it was until I got here and I started like tripping, tripping. Let me just say, cause I feel like, not that this person was asking this for that reason, but I feel like a lot of people do this. I hear a lot of people saying, ooh, I don't wanna get married cause I don't wanna let go of my free time and I don't wanna let go of my my schedule and doing me then don't do you and i'm just like if you do don't want to do those things you don't love that person enough to do that then do don't you. marry them please. please please don't what makes marriage worth it in a society where people are so against titles the basis of our marriage is the word of god so my dad says something too that's so powerful people look at the bible as a book of do's and don'ts instead of a book of rights and privileges. The Bible helps us understand our rights and privileges as a married couple. People that don't believe in the Bible will not look at it as that. They look at it like, well, if I'm just getting married, it's just a piece of paper. Like it's bondage or I can't oh, do this, okay. I can't do that, I can't be my own person. Um, and for us, it represents a spiritual contract. It's a spiritual covenant, it's a physical covenant because we swapping blood. It's a covenant between us and God. Society, and people that claim to be in the faith-based community have made the sanctity of marriage look bad because you have spiritual and religious leaders that have been messed married up. multiple times or have cheated multiple times and have messed up what it looks like in the public eye. That's why it's so important that when you're a leader, you act in such a way that, that you understand that people are looking at your life. I'm conscious of how I live my life in front of y'all because I never want to do anything that's gonna make uh, uh, make my wife look bad, make God look bad, make my parents and my family look bad. So if, if our marriage looks good and you guys are encouraged by that, we're making God look good. You don't have to agree with me. And that's okay. We can agree to disagree. I still love you. What have you had to sacrifice? You didn't answer the question, what makes marriage worth it? Like after I made a decision to marry her, like God has really showed me favor. Like he said, when a, a man that finds a wife will find favor he obtains favor with God and like, dude, I literally obtained favor when I decided to marry her. Even though it, it may have seemed like a setup, I, at the end of the day, I still had to choose her. And because I chose her and honored God and decided to marry her, like God has honored me and showed me grace and showed me favor, given me opportunities and allowed me to see the beauty in life and, the, and to see myself more clearly because they allow you not just for you to see them, but for you to see you. Like when I look at her, like I see my, like, man, I didn't realize how prideful I was in this area of my life. Or I didn't realize how, how I was shutting you out in this area of my life. Like it's, it's a reflection. It's looking like at her, I'm looking at myself. So if she looking jacked up, I'm jacked up too. That goes to the whole growing thing. Like if I'm looking at her and she's not growing, man, what am I giving off that's not allowing her to grow? It's like you're here. 
Just like you were <laughs> Okay, any last words? Man, thank you guys for rocking with us. Staying true, man, hopefully this video helped you all. Man, we've been married for five years now, heading into our sixth year. And like I said, man, this is the year of big faith for us. Um, we're believing God. Hopefully you guys, you know, pray for us. Um, keep us in your prayers. And uh, yeah, man, hopefully we're continuing to be a positive light, show showcasing that you guys can be young, saved, and married, and, 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 have, and, fun. and have fun, man, and, and live with honor and respect and treat people right and have thriving relationships with not just the opposite sex, but thriving relationship with people and, and attend great churches and make sure you're studying your work. Hopefully we're having that kind of impact on you guys because that's that's, that's the whole reason why we do this. A lot of people don't want us to do this stuff, but at the same time, I'm just, I'm just being obedient to the vision God gave me. We helping two people, <laughs> you know, live in a better way. Stay tuned for Left to Logan season six. But yeah, shout out to 50,000 Fifty thousand subscribers. Yes. You know we, if you're not we, subscribed to Life of Logos, go ahead and do that. We never, we never pub and hey, share this with fifty people. We don't do stuff like that. Yep. We don't even care really about the numbers like that. But it's just crazy to see that, you know, in five years, man, we hit fifty k, and and you don't see us doing crazy prank challenges. Right. Uh, <laughs> just doing stuff just to get views. followers and views and trying to be famous. That's not the intent behind what we do. Mm -mm. So. Yes. Yeah, so stay tuned because we going out of town next week. Peace. Deuces.